So welcome everyone. Um, we so appreciate everyone joining us today. I'll do a quick introduction of myself. So my name is Emma Chanel. I lead the incentives team here at PowerFlex. We're so excited for all of you who are joining us that are hopefully interested in adopting some EV charging solutions at your organizations and companies. Um, and my team is really excited to introduce you to some funding opportunities that will ultimately reduce your costs and hopefully meeting your EV charging goals. Um, and if you have projects in mind, hopefully one of the incentives we cover today, if not more, um, could really uh, help effectively reduce those costs. So um, I wanna quickly go over what we'll be covering today. So I'm gonna start out by just talking a little bit about PowerFlex in general, who we are, what we do, um, and then we'll dive into some uh, key incentive programs in California that have been around for a while that have high value um, and that PowerFlex has established relationships with and has worked with before. Um, there's a lot of EV incentive programs in the state of California. So we're not gonna be able to cover everything in the state of California today, but we will um, provide some references to some additional ones that we won't do a deep dive in. Um, and of course you can always reach out to us at sales at, an, at powerflex.com. Um, if you have a specific location or a project type that you feel wasn't covered today, um, but all the programs we're gonna cover today, we'll be talking about all different kinds of site types, fleets, MUDs, workplaces, public hubs, all the above. So first I'll dive into a little bit about PowerFlex. So PowerFlex is a clean technology solutions company making the transition to carbon-free electrification and transportation possible through things like EV charging, solar, storage, and intelligent energy management systems. So we work with everyone from property developers, sustainability teams, operations teams, all the way to fleet managers, IT professionals, and even drivers to help turn their sites into green energy hubs. So how do we do this? Um, PowerFlex has a suite of solutions that include commercial solar, energy storage, microgrids, and EV charging. Um, and additionally, PowerFlex has our very own energy man management software called PowerFlex X that really helps our clients monitor and optimize their on-site energy assets and systems. So in addition to that whole suite of solutions, PowerFlex is also going to be your all-in-one provider from everything from site validations, development, all the way through the entire construction process, and even through operations and maintenance after the project's been completed. And the best part about PowerFlex is when you work with PowerFlex, you have one point of contact for all of your clean tech solutions and products. So if you're looking um, at a multi-tech type installation or project or starting with one tech and wanting to build off that in the future, we can be kind of that one-stop shop. Um, and as I mentioned previously, we manage the project from start to finish. So we're here for you um, and to be your partner to make sure that projects fit your needs. And at the end of the day, all you should have to do is press the on button. So I'd like to quickly just highlight a few of the customers that we've been fortunate enough to deliver um, some of these solutions for. Um, for those of you joining, specifically from California, you should hopefully recognize some of these names, LAX, San Diego International, um, UC San Diego, all of the above. So, and for those of you who may not be familiar with PowerFlex's history as an organization, so PowerFlex is majority owned by EDF Renewables and the EDF group holds over 70 years of experience in energy and over 35 years of experience in renewable energy specifically. So focusing specifically on EV charging, which is really what we're here to talk about today, PowerFlex is gonna be the number one provider of large scale EV charging solutions. And we are the fourth largest public level two charging station network in the US. So. We're really proud to have installed well over 15,000 chargers nationwide. Um, and obviously that count is continuing to grow. Alrighty, now that we covered the basics about PowerFlex, we can get into the actual fun stuff, the funding, the dollar signs. So there are a few things um, I want to note for the group before we dive into these um, incentive programs. 
the first thing I want to talk about is um, every incentive program is going to cover some different varying level of scope for a project. And what I mean by that is every incentive program has different what we like to call eligible costs. So one program may cover costs like infrastructure upgrades, what we call make ready, some project or some incentives may cover charger installation and the chargers themselves. Some programs may offer to cover both. Um, and we'll we'll pr like dive into that a little bit, but it's just something to keep in mind um, to get the most accurate estimate for a particular site or project. Um, the best thing to do is reach out to us um, so we can get you that more detailed specific number because we're really not going to be able to dive really into the nitty gritty for it today. Um, but one thing I also want to highlight in terms of eligible costs and that kind of thing is some of these programs we review today are also stackable, um, which can be really valuable. So those programs that do have limited scopes on what they'll cover, some programs allow you to participate in two programs at the same time to kind of increase that cost reduction across the entire scope of the project. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. Um, in addition, we want to highlight that these programs are not designed to allow you to make a profit off of them. So you'll see throughout the presentation that different programs will have a certain cost percentage they may agree to cover, let's say up to 80%, up to 90%, and even up to 100% in some cases, but it's never going to go beyond that 100%. Um, and then lastly, kind of why we are here today, why my team um, exists here at PowerFlex and why we're the ones leading this conversation. Um, PowerFlex will manage the incentive application and all the coordination steps from applying all the way through closeout um, on your behalf. So that's what my team is here for. Um, we've submitted hundreds and hundreds of applications um, to date. And yeah, we have, we have the experience. We're the experts here. Um, so please keep that in mind. If something seems overwhelming or like a lot of information, that's what we're here to do. This is just kind of giving you some information. All right. Firstly, we're going to dive into um, one program that is open across all of California, and then we'll kind of dive into more regional specific programs. And that first program we're going to cover today is going to be Communities in Charge. So this program has had two cycles historically, um, and we do anticipate a third cycle happening within uh, before the end of the year. So this is a level two only program, and it's open to all kinds of site types, public, private, so workplaces, MUDs, community hubs, hospitals, all of the above should be eligible. Um, their only rule is that chargers must be shared use and cannot be installed like for a specific individual or reserved spot. And how the communities in charge application process kind of works is your application is placed first into a tier, tier one through three. And those tiers are gonna be based off of project readiness. And what we mean by that is basically permitting. So this program prioritizes projects and applications that are ready to go. So tier one is gonna require that you already have an issued building permit, which is something that PowerFlex will manage and complete for you. Um, tier two is going to mean you've at least applied for a building permit, but you're still in corrections or waiting to hear back. And then tier three is gonna represent that you haven't applied, but you at least have some kind of preliminary site plan that you can share with your application. And then once your application is placed into a tier, there's going to be a series of points assigned to it based on um, kind of community type things. So disadvantaged community status, low income status, those kind of things. So for the actual funding for this program, it's going to vary based off of one port maximums and minimums, which then vary based on your site type. So you can see over here on the right hand side, based on what type of site you're looking at, your minimums and maximums for how many ports that are allowed to be installed are gonna differ. Um, but one quick example I'll throw out there, let's say you are a workplace located in California, 
you're looking to install that 40 charger um, or port maximum, you could be looking at receiving up to $140,000 in incentive um, to help fund that project. And communities in charge, as far as eligible costs go, is very broad. Those costs or that funding can be used to cover the purchase of the chargers and their installation. It can be used to cover permitting and design and all of that work. It can be used to cover utility upgrades if those were necessary. Um, they have a really nice eligible cost list. So again, this is a program that we anticipate opening again before the end of the year. Um, so if this seems like a good fit for you or you're interested in learning a little bit more, especially since it uh, requires some pre-development work um, before you can apply, please reach out to us. Alrighty, now we're gonna dive into programs kind of located or centralized in the San Diego region. And I'm going to hand it over to Janelle, uh, one of our incentive experts, to go over this one. Hi, everyone. My name is Janelle Lindstrom. I'm one of the incentive experts on our PowerFlex team based in San Diego. And today I will be going over the SDG&E Power Your Drive program. So the Power Your Drive program offers up to 100% in incentives to cover all electrical infrastructure and charger equipment costs for commercial customers in SDG&E territory. The program is split up into three different offerings covering workplaces, apartments and condos and fleets. So currently phase one applications for workplace and apartments and condo customers are closed. However, phase two is slated to reopen this fall where selection will prioritize workplaces and underserved communities. So sdg &E defines underserved communities as a community that meets one or more of the criteria in California Assembly Bill 841. This includes certain disadvantaged and low-income areas and federally recognized tribal communities. If you would like more details, you can find this map shown on the screen and more information on the sdg &E website, which we can help you navigate to as well. So sdg &E has already begun their outreach effort to customers who have submitted interest for phase two but they are still on the hunt for small businesses in underserved communities looking to install 10 to 12 chargers maximum. So if you have any projects in mind that fall under this criteria, we really, really encourage you to reach out to our team and we can help you take advantage of the funding that will be available for phase two. So the fleet's offering on the other hand operates a little bit differently. So that application window is still open until November 1st. Um, as part of the program, sdg &E provides you with different ownership options for the infrastructure and chargers installed at your project. So you can either choose to own your own infrastructure and chargers or have sdg and &E owned infrastructure and chargers. There are differences in funding for each option. So essentially, sdg and &E will provide a rebate for whatever component you wish to own, build, pay for, and maintain. So for example, their most popular option, which is option two, this would be customer-owned infrastructure and customer-owned chargers. sdg and &E will pay, construct, and own the utility-side infrastructure up to the meter, and you, the customer, will own and pay for the customer-side infrastructure and charging stations and then receive a rebate of up to 100% of those costs. Um, each ownership option comes with its own set of pros and cons. It really just comes down to each customer's site needs and priorities. But if you have any questions about the different options offered, you can always reach out to our team um, we'll be more than happy to offer more insight for you. Next slide, please. All right, jumping into funding. So for apartments, condos, and workplaces, sdg &E will provide up to $18,000 per port. This is designed to cover all project costs, including utility and customer side infrastructure and charging hardware. There are different cost caps for the charger rebate, which all encompass that $18,000 per port package. So for apartments and condos, for L2 single ports, you can expect up to $5,000 to cover your charger. Um, and for L2 dual ports, you can expect up to $7,000 to cover those charger costs. For workplaces, you can expect to receive up to $2,000 to cover those charger costs. In addition to that, apartments and condo projects do have special access to networking and maintenance rebates. Those would cover up to $3,000 a port for networking or your actual software costs if lower and a straight $5,000 a port for maintenance. Projects are limited to 50 chargers per site for all offerings, but even so, we've seen our customers offset a very large proportion of their projected costs with this funding and even unlock upwards of over a million dollars in total funding for a site. 
Next slide. All right, so for fleets, SDG&E will cover up to 80% of customer side make ready infrastructure costs. There are additional charger rebates that are reserved for transit agencies, school districts, and fleet sites located in a disadvantaged community, excluding Fortune 1000 companies. Um, if your site is eligible, the charger rebate will cover up to 50% of the charger cost up to a cap. So those rebate caps for fleets are structured a little bit differently in that the rebate caps are based off your charger's power output. So at minimum, you can expect to receive up to $3,000 a charger for char chargers outputting up to 19.2 kilowatts. And at maximum, you can receive up to $75,000 a charger for chargers outputting over 150 kilowatts. So another unique aspect about the fleet's offering is that you can stack funding with other local, state, and federal incentive programs. This will help to just further maximize your savings for your projects. This is an important distinction as stacking is not allowed for apartments and condos and workplace offerings. It'll only um, be covered for fleet projects. So that about wraps up the Power Your Drive program. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to our team. We'll be more than happy to give you any insight or information that you're wanting. Um, but now I'll pass it on to Emma who will introduce our next program. Alrighty. So now we're gonna dive into another um, utility program, the SCE Charge Ready Charging Infrastructure Program. So SCE has historically has offered all kinds of EV charging incentives and rebates through the past couple of years um, from DCFC programs to make ready programs to actual rebates for chargers. Um, and the offering that is currently open right now is kind of a relaunch of their charging infrastructure program. So this is highly competitive, again, open right now. And we're estimating that funds will be kind of allocated or exhausted for this program by the end of October, if not sooner. Um, this program is looking specifically for projects installing level two chargers, and they're looking at um, the installation of 20 or more. Um, any kind of non-residential site, including multifamily units are eligible. Um, and some additional requirements include um, the site must be located within a DAC, which you can find over here on the right-hand side and also available on the SCE website. Um, SCE requires the installation of a dedicated meter. They also require enrollment in one of their demand response programs. And they do require that you agree to operate and maintain the charging stations installed um, for a full 10 years. So um, now this program is more so of a cost coverage versus a rebate. So there's not going to be actually any like check written and money received. Um, but what SCE will do will cover 100% of the costs associated with the design, construction, and installation of any needed infrastructure on both the utility side of the meter and the customer side of the meter. So this little image on the right hand side can be really helpful to kind of visualize what that means. Um, so they will just incur all of those costs themselves, um, but you would be responsible for the purchase and installation of the actual chargers. But for sites that have a lot of work needed to just even get their site prepared to house EV charging, this program can be extremely valuable because those make ready costs can, can really stack up. Alrighty, now we're gonna dive into programs located in the LA region and I think I'm gonna pass it back to Janelle. Yeah, so today I will be going over the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power Charge Up program. This program helps to fund L2 and DCFC chargers for customers in the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power Service territory. The latest application cycle actually just closed this past June. The next cycle is tentatively scheduled to reopen in Q1 2025. However, an exact date hasn't been formally announced yet. This is a highly competitive program. Applications are randomized into a lottery with the exception of 501c organizations with tax exempt status. Those are prioritized within the lottery. So the good part of the program is, although it is competitive, you can apply after a project has been installed to be retroactively funded, as long as costs have been accrued after June 1st, 2022. So some other eligibility requirements, your chargers must be operated for at least five years, and LEDWP has a requirement that EVSCs on the same meter as solar meters 
otherwise known as cogen meters, must offer free charging to drivers. However, if your EVSCs are installed on a separate meter, they would be allowed to charge fees for the actual vehicle charging. Next slide, please. So for eligible costs, LADWP has expanded on what they do consider to be eligible costs. Those costs would include utility service infrastructure, EV charging infrastructure, and most recently, networking and maintenance as well. I do wanna highlight that any costs incurred for the purchase and installation of EV chargers and equipment required by the LA Green Building Code are ineligible unless you belong to a tax exempt organization. So for organizations that are not tax exempt, chargers must be installed in addition to the amount of charging stations required by the LA Green Building Code. Next slide. All right, so for funding for L2 charging stations, the program provides up to $4,000 a charger for projects not located in a disadvantaged community and up to $5,000 a charger for projects located inside a disadvantaged community. Depending on the number of parking spaces your site has, you may be eligible to receive funding for up to 40 L2 chargers. So if you have a site with over 158 parking spots and you're located in a disadvantaged community, you are looking at a maximum of $200,000 worth of L2 funding, covering up to 100% of your eligible project costs. Um, if you're wondering what defines a disadvantaged community, those are captured in the Cal Enviro screen tool, which can be found on the LAWP website, which we can help you navigate to as well. Next slide. All right, so for DCFC funding, if you choose to install a DC fast charger that delivers between 50 to 149 kilowatts per connector, you are eligible for up to $20,000 per charger. PowerFlex also offers solutions in the tier two range, which funds up to $55,000 per charger, delivering 150 to 274 kilowatts per connector. DCFC funding is limited by public accessibility. So if you have a site that is publicly accessible, um, and does not have restrictions such as employee-only parking or student-only parking, you are, must be available to the public for at least 18 hours a day and seven days a week, excluding holidays to qualify. Those that do not meet this criteria for public accessibility can install up to two DC fast chargers per site. So I do want to highlight that you are able to apply for both L2 and DCFC funding for the same project, However, these lotteries are usually conducted separately, so you do risk that only one part of your project is funded. But as mentioned earlier, the program does allow four projects to be retroactively funded. So if you get placed on a wait list or if only the L2 portion of your project gets selected, you can always reapply for the next round. So that wraps up the Charge Up program. Again, if you have any questions or project specific questions for our team, please reach out to us. But for now, I will pass it back to Emma, who will introduce us to this next program. Alrighty, the last one we're gonna deep dive into today is gonna be the Pasadena Water and Power EV Charging Rebate. So this program has been around for a while now and they still have funding available and are continuing to accept applications on a rolling basis. Um, this is another program that has a pretty wide open site type eligibility. So any kind of commercial workplace, nonprofit, MUD site would be eligible. They have rebates for both level two and DCFC chargers. And um, really the only requirements are, you know, you obviously need to be a PWP um, customer and they will, um, they only accept applications after a permit has been issued or also post installation within 90 days. So um, if a project's already been installed, as long as it's still in that 90 day window, um, you can actually retroactively receive funding for that. Um, if you want to apply upfront though, we do wait until we have that issued permit to show PWP. All right, and their funding is going to be baseline $3,000 per port up to $75,000 per site. Um, and that funding will cover the equipment, the installation of the chargers, and also any kind of permitting fees. So they also have some bonus incentive opportunities available, which basically doubles that base incentive. So you'd be looking at $6,000 per port if you fit just one of the following. So if you're looking to actually install a DCFC, um, that would receive up to $6,000 per port um, per DCFC as well. 
um, charging stations that are access accessible to students and patrons recognized by the LA County Department of Education or the Western Association of Schools and Colleges automatically get that $6,000 per level two. Charging stations installed in income qualified housing projects will also get that bonus incentive. Um, and then also just any charging stations installed within a disadvantaged community, which you can find that map over here on the right hand side, that um, red section, those automatically qualify for that um, $6,000 per port as well. So as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I wish we could go through every single incentive available in California, but there are a lot. So I just want to quickly highlight um, some additional ones that we have engaged with and worked with in the past. Um, a lot of these are kind of smaller community size suppliers um, and utilities, um, and pretty much all of the ones displayed here I want to highlight are also eligible to be stacked with that commu uh, the Communities in Charge program, that California-wide one that I shared at the very beginning. So um, the lar larger utility programs like SDG&E, LADWP, SCE, um, are not eligible to be stacked with Communities in Charge, but the smaller um, community group uh, incentive programs are. So again, that can just continue to maximize the cost reduction that you would be seeing, especially because a lot of the more utility-based uh, programs are going to be covering things like make ready, getting your site prepared to actually house the load of EV charging, um, and the communities in charge rebate can help you actually cover the cost of chargers and the installation and networking. Um, but again, here are some just programs if we didn't cover um, a program in your area. Here are some additional ones. Um, and I wanted to point out too that you're always welcome to navigate to the PowerFlex website. There's a tab up at the top called the Policy Hub that will give you an opportunity to kind of see a map of all the different incentive programs that we've at least like closely engaged with. We're, we're looking at new programs every month, engaging with new rebate processors nationwide. Um, but that will give you a little more information on programs that you might be eligible for. And there's also a really easy contact form where you could reach out, ask a few questions, and we'll be happy to get back to you. And the last thing we're going to cover today is, you know, we talk about these incentive programs, we talk about their eligibility, all the funding, but what does it actually look like to participate in one? Um, so I wanted to kind of walk through the timeline of what an incentive application might look like. Now, I will preface this with every incentive is different. Some incentives take much longer to process applications. Some turn it around in just a matter of two weeks. So um, that's why you'll see some pretty broad ranges here. And that's, again, something we're engaged with. We can always advise when we get an actual project and a specific incentive narrowed down. That's information that we can prepare and assist you with. But in general, there is typically a pre-application period, which is where PowerFlex is going to prepare that preliminary design for your site. We're going to work with you to decide uh, what charger count makes sense, what location, preliminary location makes sense, all of that, get kind of a quote for the project. And then my team is actually going to prepare and submit the incentive application on your behalf. So that may require some coordination between you and my team just collecting preliminary things like what's your official organization name, maybe a W-9 here and there, but we'll do majority of the work. And then once that application submitted, we'll wait to hear back. Um, and hopefully most often the incentive program approves of the application. And then you'll move forward with most programs do require um, a signature on like a funding agreement, which just means like you agree that um, you'll follow the incentive rules and the site is is authorized to participate in the incentive, things like that. And then you'll also work with PowerFlex on an agreement for the installation project. And then once all of that paperwork is done, we will proceed with the installation. Um, again, that can vary depending on if make ready work is needed, um, if we're just coming in and installing some chargers, replacing chargers, things like that. 
But while installation is being completed, my team is closely engaged with our project managers actually doing the project. And along the way, we're collecting all the documentation that's going to be needed to close out the incentive application. So that'll include things like final inspections, collecting charger photos, all of that good stuff. So we'll handle all of that, submit it in a timely manner. Um, and then the chargers are now operational and the incentive program is reviewing that final documentation we submitted. If they have any follow-up questions or want something corrected, we will coordinate all of that until they approve of the application and they actually release the payment if applicable um, to you. So um, the work doesn't stop though after the project's complete and payment has been received by you as the site host. Um, most incentive programs also have some kind of compliance or data reporting aspect to them. So SCE, for example, if you recall, I mentioned they require operation and maintenance of chargers for 10 years. And in addition to that, they require uh, charger usage data to be reported on a monthly basis for that same 10 year duration. So uh, that's a lot of data. That's a, one more thing to remember every single month, but we have a dedicated compliance team that will actually fulfill all those needs for you. Um, and most incentive programs actually prefer to just engage with your network provider for that data usage. Um, so it's not out of the norm for us to kind of handle that on your behalf as well. Um, most programs though do not require it for that long. The typical range is three to five years, um, but yeah, we'll fulfill at whatever frequency the program requires and take that off your plate as well. Alrighty, I think that kind of wraps up our presentation for today. I think we have a little bit of time for questions. If anyone wants to share anything in the Q&A, I think we have one we can at least kick off with though. So Janelle, I'll direct this to you if you'd like. Um, obviously we only covered the state of California today. So um, Janelle, can you tell us a little bit more about does PowerFlex only work in the state of California or uh, what is the situation there? Yeah, so PowerFlex does not just work in California. We are a national EV charger solutions provider with deployments across the country with over 15,000 chargers to date, as mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, so our work doesn't just stop in California. Um, our incentives team works with incentive programs nationwide. We have many built and established relationships with program administrators, um, specifically in New York, Georgia, Arizona, Washington, you name it. So um, our work does not stop here. If you have any projects located um, in another state, we are um, here to help. Awesome. All right, we did get one question come through and it's asking if the slide regarding or information regarding SCE, uh, the SCE charging infrastructure program must have a minimum of 20 ports. And the answer is yes, um, this current kind of relaunch of their charging infrastructure program, they're requesting projects installing no less than 20 ports. So they're kind of looking at a variety anywhere from 20 to 60, obviously giving feasibility. Um, so yeah. Alrighty, I think we have time for one more. Um, Janelle, I'll direct this one to you again. So what are some common challenges that you can touch on that organizations may have when trying to apply for clean energy funding, like some of the programs we talked about today? Yeah, so I would say the majority of challenges happen with incomplete applications or just knowledge gaps in available funding. Um, programs are all different. They all have different nuances in their requirements, and it can be really hard to keep track of those and understand those. Um, so customers have found it really helpful for our team to jump in. Um, we've done a ton of research um, and reaching out to the program before we even submit an application, um, just to be sure we're fully understanding what's required and ensure seamless process throughout. Um, so our customers have found a lot of value in that. Um, also, if there are, are any revisions or corrections needed in your application, um, again, we already have uh, very established uh, working relationships with these program administrators. 
Um, so typically if any issues do come up, they usually let us know um, pretty far in advance um, and we can get those resolved right away. Awesome, thanks Janelle. And yeah, I think we have one more question that come through, came through and we'll wrap up for today. Again, if you have any questions that pop up afterwards, um, I know we'll be sharing this recording as well. So if you want to go back and reference it and you have any further questions or perhaps you have questions about incentives in other states or specific to your site, please reach out to us at sales at powerflex.com and we'll be happy to kind of give you a summary um, on what might be an actual good fit for you and get you those specifics. So the last question we have is, do we have any idea on the exact month the CEC will be opening again for applications. So um, that's referring to, I believe, the Communities in Charge program, which is run by the CEC. Um, originally, this program was slated to open this past June, um, but due to some funding access issues, they had to postpone. Um, and we're following up weekly, kind of pressing the CEC in our contacts there to give us a bit of a heads up on when this next cycle is going to open. But the information we shared today is the most up to date we have. Um, they have the intention of opening another cycle before the end of the year. Um, and again, there is some preliminary work that needs to be completed. So getting ahead. Um, is, is always a good idea. So you can hopefully get in that tier one, at least tier two type um, application. But um, again, if you're interested in that pro program, continue to reach out to us and we can keep you updated. We don't anticipate the guidelines of the program changing. So we can at least kind of get you informed and give you an incentive estimate um, based on the previous cycle information that should stay pretty much the same. Um, Alrighty, I think that will wrap up for today. Um, thank you all again so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to kind of share um, some of the programs that we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And we hope that you're walking away um, with some sparked interest, at least getting the, the wheels turning on um, some of your EV projects that you may have been thinking about. And again, please reach out to us at any time if you'd like some more information on incentives, feasibility of a project at your sites, um, and so forth. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.